Hello and welcome back to climatedebate.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to be giving an overview of our new joint project with the Together Declaration on the claims underpinning traffic reduction schemes like ULES in London and LTNs in 15-minute cities, which we investigate in our new report, Is There an Air Pollution Crisis in UK Cities? Politicians like Sadiq Khan often make very alarmist and dramatic statements to drive their policy making. And here he is on his various Twitter accounts, claiming that 4,000 deaths are caused each year in London from air pollution, or toxic air, as he likes to call it. And he uses extremely emotive language in making these arguments. He asks how many more Londoners can afford to have their lungs irreparably damaged, and how many more children are we willing to let inhale poison? And he's very keen to make sure that he's the guy who's going to be saving all these lives um, and saving all these people. Um, so where is this claim from and, and how true is it? Um, are there really 4,000 deaths in London each year because of toxic air? Uh, there are two documents that we refer to in our report. Uh, one is the Chief Medical Officer's Chris Whitty's uh, report on air pollution, and the other is a report by the Environmental Research Group, uh, ERG, at Imperial College. Uh, they are impressive uh, people and institutions, of course, and at face value, we can see that these reports do seem to support Khan's claims. The CMO finds 26 to 38,000 deaths a year in England, and the ERG finds between 3,600 and 4,100 deaths per year in London, uh, both due to air pollution. But as we can already see from these statements, the CMO and ERG's statements aren't quite as straightforward as Khan's. On the left, the CMO argues that deaths in England due to air pollution are only equivalent to something, though he doesn't say what they are equivalent to. And on the right, the ERG's report says that the deaths are equivalent to a number of life years lost. So we're not actually talking about deaths, or not deaths as you and I would understand it in everyday conversation. These are deaths as a statistician seems to understand it. Both the CMO and the ERG's reports take their methodology from the same source, which is a 2018 report by the Committee on the Medical Effects of Air Pollutants, or COMIAP, which was convened by the government. Uh, COMIAP reviewed 11 studies that attempted to find a statistical relationship between exposure to air pollution and increased mortality risk. So it wasn't doing any science as such, it was merely reviewing the existing literature the epidemiological literature that tried to establish the same link. And what it found, as much as the CMO and others have reported, is that air pollution causes the equivalent to 28,000 to 36,000 deaths in the UK in 2013. But unlike Khan, they are not unequivocal. They stress that the caveats and uncertainties of their work and of the scientific literature must be communicated clearly. And this is extremely important because what they are not saying is that there is a causal link between air pollution and deaths in the way that Khan has. And a number of scientists involved with Comiat believe that risk should be even more carefully communicated to the public, avoiding words like deaths. So Sadiq Khan is doing exactly what the Comiap scientists said should not be done. And the dissenting Comiap scientists were right. The public has been misled into believing that there is a causal link between air pollution and deaths. Sadiq Khan's claims have no basis in science. And it is misleading to say that scientists support the claim that 4,000 deaths are caused by air pollution. The estimate of risk that Khan prefers is 4,000 deaths per year in London. But this can just as reasonably be expressed as each person losing just 68 hours of life per year. All of the terms on each line of this table are equivalent to each other. 4,000 deaths per year in London is equivalent to each Londoner losing 68 hours of life. 
They are not deaths. And in case that still seems shocking to you, it's important to remember that life expectancy has been rising by 73 days per person per year for over half a century in the UK. So 68 hours of life lost per year is very unlikely to make much of a difference to anybody. So in outlining what it believes are going to be the benefits of air pollution reduction, Comiap says that if we reduced average air pollution exposure by one microgram, then the net benefit would be eight days of extra life for the average person in the UK in a century. And this chart shows the average levels of UK air pollution over recent years. And so we can see that the difference between the urban and rural background level of air pollution is currently about 9 micrograms per cubic metre of NO2. So if there could be a policy which could reduce the urban background level of air pollution to make it equal to the rural background level of air pollution, it would produce a hypothetical benefit of just 72 days increased life expectancy to people born in the year 2129. And this benefit doesn't seem to be particularly remarkable, so we need to ask if this is the best way of making life better for people using politics. And there's good evidence that it is not. And here are some findings from the UK Health Foundation. They show that relatively small increases in income produce much more substantial increases in healthy life expectancy, especially for people on the left of these charts, uh, the poorest. Increasing an individual's income by £416 per year, which is not a huge amount of money, increases healthy life expectancy by 219 days. That's already a much greater benefit than we can find from Comiap's report and it's three times greater than the 72 days extra life we found from a hypothetical air pollution reduction policy. So what does this mean for London? On the left we have a chart of air pollution versus life expectancy by each London borough for males and females. And on the right we have a chart showing household income versus life expectancy uh, for the same. Exposure to air pollution correlates very poorly with life expectancy. It's not a statistically significant effect. But household income is extremely well correlated with life expectancy. And more than half the difference in longevity at the level of London Borough can be explained by differences in income. So it's the chart on the right that should concern politicians who should be arguing about how to achieve what it clearly says ought to be done. Wealth and welfare are linked in many and complicated ways, but one of the main factors that link income and health may be quality of accommodation. Outdoor air pollution has very little to do with it, and so air pollution scientists really don't have very much to say to us. That doesn't mean there shouldn't be some form of policy to reduce air pollution in certain places, but it does mean that Sadiq Khan's claims have no basis in science. So we think that Sadiq Khan's alarmist and unscientific claims and his anti-car policies are very likely to do much more harm than good by damaging people's incomes and their opportunities. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to know more, please find the report and other articles on the Together website and on climatedebate.co.uk. And please subscribe to both. And if you can, please support our work. Thank you.